Well, hello, visitors to and denizens of the YouTubeiverse. I'm John, your social hermit in the woods. I'm actually out in the woods today because it's winter field day. For those of you who uh, don't know what that is, that's a ham radio thing that occurs once a year. But the key word here is winter. So it's cold and snowy out there. Here's what it looks like where I'm set up right now to do some uh, ham radio activities. When I built this minivan, I opted to go for an aft galley configuration. Now that's got some advantages and it's got some disadvantages. One disadvantage in particular is in inclement weather. Is there anything you can do with your minivan to cook yourself a hot meal without having to stand out there in the cold and use that galley. Now, there are people out there who actually run full cooking setups inside their minivan. I chose not to do that because I didn't really like having open flames that close uh, proximity to everything else in here. Um, I'm going to show you that even without an actual fueled stove up here, there are a couple of different solutions for making yourself a hot meal. Today, I'm gonna to show you one of those, which is to use a self-heating ration. So let's get started. Now, there are several different kinds of self-heating rations or self-heating meals on the market. One that you might be familiar with are the military ones known as MREs or meals ready to eat. Don't get me wrong, I like those. Some of the meals are actually quite good, uh, and they have a fantastic shelf life. They're a good thing to carry for emergency gear in your vehicle. My experience is that the self-heating on those isn't fantastic. It makes them warm, but not really hot. It's, you know, it's better than cold. But they really, in my hands, work better if you can heat a pot of water, put your two foil pouches for your two entrees in the hot water, heat them in that, and then use that water to make your coffee or your hot chocolate or whatever goes along with it with that particular meal. Another option are these commercially available, usually Asian market, self-heating meals. Um, I'm gonna be doing one of these today, which is a kimchi style uh, bibimbap self-heating rice uh, from I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but Jahaiguo. I've had this before in a couple of important points. This gets really hot. You let it go for 15 minutes because it actually has to cook the rice. And it is definitely hot enough to do that. Um, I like the flavors in here. Um, it's tasty. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, bibimbap, it's kind of a traditional Korean kind of thing, and I think of it as being a lunch dish. Now, one of the things I don't like about this, though, is that it really doesn't have a lot of protein in it. They're tasty and they're filling, but you kind of feel like there's something missing. So I'm going to do two things today. One is I'm going to thin slice a little bit of luncheon meat and drop it in there. That's already cooked. Bibimbap traditionally comes with a fried egg. Now, I can't fry an egg in here, but if I drop a raw egg in there, this definitely gets hot enough to cook that, and it's going to be both closer to traditional and will have some more protein. So let's go ahead and get this set up and ready to go. So there is a bunch of stuff in here. These things come complete with everything you need except for the water used for the heating pack. And that means, in fact, the potable water is already in here. This is a very nice touch because if you were someplace and didn't have clean water to put in here, uh, otherwise you've got that. So we've got some water, we've got the rice, we have uh, mystery packet A, we got the little aluminum bowl this is actually going to cook in, and then down in here we have all kinds of other stuff. Okay, so um, we got some sesame oil. This, I think, is uh, powdered seaweed and some other stuff for use at the end. There's our heater pack. This is a sauce. Uh, 
some kind of mushrooms or something like that. And this one will be some sort of pickled veggies. Okay. Now there are generally some instructions here, um, but they're not the clearest. So add in order, instant rice package, drinking water, vegetable package. Now vegetable package, I'm pretty sure is going to be this one. And we've got lots of uh, carrots, there's corn, there's some mushrooms, which I'm not a huge fan of, but they kind of go in here. Uh, probably some bean sprout kind of things. I'm not too sure what some of the rest of it is. Okay, I'm just going to break that rice up a little bit. It's already clumping up in the water. And try to mix that and the vegetables a little bit. Now, before that gets going, I'm going to do my secret ingredient here, which is I'm going to drop in my egg. And I'm going to do some sliced luncheon meat. Roast beef would be best here. What I happen to have is some turkey slices. Take those. And we're going to pop all those in there as well. So we've mixed those things in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in the heating package. And these are the same concept chemically as the military ones. It's just that this layout tends to work much better than the wrap around package they use. Really, this is just a redox reaction. Um, run amok and it's highly exothermic and it's going to jump a lot, dump a lot of heat. So we put that down in the bottom of this container here. These containers, by the way, fantastic later on if you want to use them for painting jobs. Okay. And on top of that, we want to add some cold water. Now you definitely want that to be cold water, not hot. You don't want to blow yourself up. And there is a down inside here. Hopefully you can see that. There is a mark on the side. It's not very much. So we're going to take our cold water. Pour that into right there. And you want to act fairly quickly at this point. Water is in. We drop that in. We put the lid on. And we're going to wait 15 minutes. It's going to take it about 30 seconds here. And that should start doing its thing. Well, at this point, we're going to do a little bit of an interlude because about 30 seconds later, something very unusual happened. You may have noticed in the photograph of the setup that I had my little butane Cobia Cupid heater running to keep them inside of the minivan warm. And of course, I had a window open for ventilation and also to run my coax cable out for the radio assembly. But because I was doing that and anytime I'm running heating inside the minivan, I have a carbon monoxide sensor. This is a nice shiny new one I got recently, which in addition to an alarm actually has a digital readout in parts per million, and it has a humidity readout and a temperature readout, which can be set to either Fahrenheit or Celsius. So this was hanging there doing its job. My self-heating meal is about 60 seconds into operation. Everything is good. And all of a sudden, the carbon monoxide sensor starts screaming. The alarm goes off. So I look over at it, switch the display on, because it's not normally on, and usually, even with the butane heater on, it reads zero parts per million. Once in a rare while, I'll see six parts per million carbon monoxide. It's reading 50 parts per million, and it is going up fast. Now, 
I have a background in biochemistry, and I think I know what's going on inside that heater pack. And I don't see any way that that should generate carbon monoxide. But while this is going up very quickly, and I'm looking at it, it starts at 50, it's gone up to 60, 70. I, we're seconds later, and it's approaching 100 parts per million. I decided I wasn't going to argue with the carbon monoxide sensor. I was going to get the side door of the van wide open and get some air in there before something bad happened. And opening the door made the numbers go back down. Tried closing the door, and instantly the numbers, they go up again. They, I think it reached a peak of 125 parts per million. Um, what's going on there? Okay, well, long story short, I'll just cut to the chase here. These electronic carbon monoxide sensors, it turns out, will false alarm for hydrogen gas. Okay, now that's not normally a problem. They're not normally exposed to hydrogen gas anywhere in the environment. You're not inside a blimp. Uh, and most places don't have exposure to hydrogen gas and it floats away and it's never around. It turns out that these heat packs, as I mentioned earlier, they're a redox reaction. Redox reactions generally have hydrogen ions, or in this case, hydrogen gas, as one of the factors being produced or absorbed. Produced in this case, very large amounts of it. And within the trapped confines of the minivan, the hydrogen gas levels went up. This cross detects it. It can't tell the difference. And the alarm starts going off. Apparently, this is a known and not super rare cause of domestic carbon monoxide alarms going off and fire departments getting called, and it turns out it was a self-heating meal packet. So, uh, a couple of things from that. One, it was nice to be able to test that the sensor on this worked, even if it was for the wrong analyte. And two, keep some ventilation open while you're doing this. Um, it's just a good idea. And I don't know how they do it, but the heaters really run like, 15 minutes plus or minus about a minute. All right, the 15 minutes is up. Let's take a look. See, look at that cooked egg. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add the other spices and stuff in here now. So let's go ahead now and add in the, uh, the kimchi, the nori, the sesame oil, and the sauce. So we have the kimchi package. That would be this one. Oh, there we go, that looks good. I like kimchi. Basically, just kind of like spicy sauerkraut. The nori, which is the dried seaweed and sesame seeds. Stuff like that. Sprinkle on sesame oil. Ooh, that is smelling really good. And now, finally, let's add the sauce package. Now, I'm going to give this a little bit of a stir. Yep, that egg is well cooked. The yolk is not even runny. All right, let's bite into this. Delicious. There we go. We've got a hot meal, filling, nutritious, made right here inside the minivan without having to use an open flame source. Now, there's other ways to make meals up here without an open flame source, and we'll try to cover those in some other videos. With that, I'm going to get back to my hot lunch here and then back to winter field day. Hopefully this gave you an idea for at least one way to make yourself a hot meal inside your minivan without having to open up the rear hatch in bad weather. Until next time, this is John, your social hermit, saying goodbye.